Hi everyone and welcome to the real-time coloring of Scruffy the Elf. Scruffy the Elf is a cute little elf from Make It Crafty and this is the real-time coloring. If you want to see the card tutorial you can find the link to that in the description down below uh, at the right corner and at the end of the video. Also I'm doing a little bit of a different thing so I'm actually putting the card tutorial in the beginning of the video and the sped up version of this coloring at the end of that video. So if you don't want to see me coloring real time you can go hop over there and look at that if you like coloring. I hope you do because my videos are mostly about coloring. Anyhow, uh, this is Scruffy the Elf and today we are coloring him and I have picked out my usual color scheme because I was a little bit worried coloring him because I printed him out a lot smaller than I usually do. These cute little images uh, usually have a lot of small details and I was a little worried that I couldn't get all those details in but it's it went much much easier than I thought it would. I started off actually going in with my not absolute darkest color uh, instead I went in with the next to darkest that I usually use which was the E11. I wasn't sure if the E04 would work when the image was so small. It can sometimes kind of be too much of the E04. E04 is one of those I do try to use a little bit more sparingly than um, the other colors because it's such a dark color it can easily turn out to be a very very red character but by actually coloring it with the rest of the series of Copic colors that I've used um, I could go in and kind of figure out where best that EO4 would work and I really really like that it's um, I really like to doing that kind of order because I feel that I really was able to um, push his face to be much more dimensional than I had had in a while and also it got so much better blended I really enjoy this but that is also a side effect of coloring a small character or a small area and that is because it's so small it doesn't take as much time so the ink doesn't dry and when the ink doesn't dry it will blend a lot better than if uh, you say put down a layer wait for it to dry and then put in the next layer because um, the blending actually happens in the wetness so the pigment can move in the wetness um, so yeah that's the technique behind every kind of alcohol marker. Uh, the eyes I actually go in with the darker of my green and then adding this B63 just teeny tiny to shade the eyeball to make it a little bit rounder. You hardly see that but it made such a big difference to the dimension in the eye and making those whites not just be stark flat whites. So for the next part, I'm doing the headdress of this character. Now there's so many different ways you can color these headdresses. You can add really strong creases. Um, if you go to the makeitcrafty.com, Make which is the store blog, and then you um, do a search for Scruffy and uh, then you can see him both that you can see him as um, I think it's Zoe colored him because I think she is the one that actually colored him up for the store but you can also see tagged images inspirational cards from when other people have colored him may it be um, from our design team or from other people and again, I don't think I ever talked about this, but over on the Make It Crafty um, store, when you start buying things, you get an account. When you get an account, you can actually add to the gallery in the store. So what you can do is you can upload your cards or your coloring of these characters and just tag them with the name of the character and such. There is a feature where you can load to your gallery um, 
add item or add card to your gallery, um, which is super nice to do for Zoe. And that will help other people that also want to color the image to get more different inspiration from that inspirational slide that you can find on that on, on the different pages for the different characters. So the first color I put down here was the YG67, uh, which is kind of a dark yellow green almost almost towards blue or at least towards the the grayer and darker less saturated and then it go to YG 17 again it is a little bit less saturated than the YG 76 67 sorry um, but it is not as saturated as the YG07, which has a lot of color. Now, YG07 is the tone that I picked for my mid tone. It's the tone of one of the green trees on the pattern paper pack that I used for to make a card with this character. And I wanted it to be my mid tone. I do like to use. Uh, four colors when I color, especially for bigger parts, because you can kind of build better and you can get a bigger um, contrast in your image, so a bigger difference between your highlights and your darkness, and still get a good blend. And this is why I choose to use more pens when I color. For the highlight, I chose YG05. YG05 is lighter than the YG07, and it's also a teeny tiny bit more yellow. And that is actually a really good tip if you want to have a better contrast, a deeper contrast, is that you choose a dark pen that is less saturated and goes more towards the blue spectrum blue or purple spectrum depending on which base color you have um, and then you can use a um, highlighter that goes more towards kind of the yellowish spectrum um, and that those tones will help keep the mid-tones look more like they looked really looked because how you interpret color depends on the colors you have around them. That is basically how colors works. It tricks us a lot. <laughs> but yeah, so that's kind of color color combinations that I like to work with. Um, then I went in to do the scarf and I felt that because I printed this image quite small, I think it's like two and a half to three inches, somewhere there. Um, and it's so it's pretty small as a character so I didn't want to go in and do all of the shading on both the gray and the green so what I did was I totally uh, did the kind of shading in the gray and then I'm just going over with my mid tone on top of that shading because the shading will be you can see it through as Copics are opaque not opaque, transparent, that's the word. Um, they are transparent, so you can see the gray kind of seeping through and you can get that shadow. The reason why I rarely do it for the rest of the character is that you can see the gray seeping through. So the colors actually get a little bit more muddy. However, for small things like his scarf, it is a lifesaver, I would say, that kind of technique, because then you really don't have to worry about all those small 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 things uh, instead you can just go over and do the full shading so i do use that uh, and that gray that i used there was the toner grays and i'm going to use them for other parts in the image so it will be tied together uh, in the rest of the image for my browns i went in with a color combination that i might have used before but I don't know and it's basically just using the E30s. In this case I was not looking to get a very deep contrast, I wasn't looking to get super much dimension, I wanted his clothes to look kind of fussy and cozy and um, I 
thought that would be great by not adding too much contrast. The more contrast you add, the more shiny things are, and the less contrast you add, the more kind of matte they are. So it feels like it has a, a velvet costume. That was the word I was looking for. A velvet, like trousers and, and then the little edge of his hat. It looks like they're almost velvety and I really like, I really like it. It feels like cozy and, and such. So the color combination is just the E35, 34 and 31. Super simple. Uh, I'm also going from dark to light without adding a bottom light and without um, adding going in with the light first shading. Sometimes when I'm insecure on how to shade, I take the lightest marker that I'm going to use and I do the shades in that and then I add the darks. This usually helps to blend the dark a little bit better. So it's a tip if you have a hard time blending your darks because that is the thing that is going on first and because the darker have less liquid and more pigment, they might get harder. But if you do go in with the light at the bottom, um, you can get that to uh, move a little bit easier. However, if you do go with the light uh, over the full image, uh, your light would, will be not as light as the first layer, but as the second layer. So if you want that, uh, I wanted to have the lightness of the E31. So in this case, I'm uh, covering the white parts with the E31 as my last stage. And that makes me keep that lightness um, because I didn't want to go darker. And if you are one who loves a technique that is doing the lights, then the midtones, then the darks, and, and then blending that or doing the lights, the midtones, then blending with the lights, then the darks, then blending with the midtones, and then blending with the lights, you will get more layers and you will get a darker tone than the um, than I get if you use my color combinations. That is not um, kind of bad. It's not bad in any shape or form. If you like that technique and you get the results you want with that technique, that is a good thing. You should use the technique that works for you. Um, but uh, if you want to keep the same colors that I have, you would want to use the same paper as I do because different papers will um, show the pigment in different ways, especially when they have different colors. This is towards a very, very grayish, bluish white. So the colors will show up very differently on this than to, for example, Nina. Um, so to get this exact same colors as I use, uh, you would use the Make It Crafty uh, blending cardstock and you would go from dark to light. But that is only if you want the exact color. Uh, otherwise, do the kind of color the way you feel comfortable with and that gives you the results that you want. Anyone saying anything different is no. You shouldn't believe that there's one right way. Um, most of the kind of artistic beauty out there isn't done with standard techniques. It just playing a lot around. Like I think it's Leonardo da Vinci, for example. I don't think I think Mona Lisa is one of those images that you they can't restore because he didn't do the same kind of um, col colors uh, when when you work with. Um, doing paintings at that time, you used to put um, a layer of oil on top of it. Um, but because of the way that Leonardo da Vinci worked, experimental, you can't clear that top because then you will clear a lot of his colored layers and you will basically ruin the image. Um, but uh, his creations are beautiful. So he went with a way that wasn't uh, as they used to do it at that time, but 
he got beautiful results. So never feel that the way you are coloring is something wrong. Really, really want to emphasize that. Um, I can teach you or try to teach you my way of coloring. I'm not saying it's the right way of coloring. I'm just saying that I get the results that I want on my images with it. So yeah, that it's so it is. And also I do watch other people and I try other techniques because I do like to uh, learn new things. But um, I find that this technique is one of those that really stuck with me because it really works. Now we're going to talk about bells because I'm doing something very specific with these bells and this is also part of this uh, the more contrast you get the more shiny things look. The bigger bells are the ones we want to look at here and that is first of all I have made a small little kind of smiley face uh, of a shiny part on the bottom of it that is not my main highlight. My main highlight is on the top of the little bell. Um, but if you look at a round shiny object, any kind of object, be it a bell or a little um, bauble for your Christmas tree, uh, you will see if it is shiny, that uh, little um, smiley face at the bottom is very 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 sharp which means that it's uh, almost white. I'm actually going to color it over with the T01 in the end because I felt it was a little bit too white because I wanted the highlight on top being the kind of the lightest of the highlights but the T00, um, T0 is uh, just so little light but yeah that is the video for today thank you so much for watching if you like this video please thumbs it up if you have any questions just comment down below uh, also if you have any requests of images from make it crafty that you want me to color put them also in the uh, description down below thank you again for watching and i'll see you later bye